वेलकम बैक गाइज टू अनदर वीडियो एंड इन दिस वन आई विल बी टेस्टिंग आउट वॉट केबल्स वॉट काइंड ऑफ यू माइक्रो यू एस बी केबल्स शुड यू बाय टू पावर योर रेसबरी पाई ना फॉर दिस पर्पज टूडे आई विल बी यूजिंग थ्री मेजर कैटेगरीज ऑफ यू एस बी केबल दैट आर अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद द फर्स्ट वन एंड दिस इज द वन what i am calling is the zero cost usb cable now these cables are often found with your phones and um, they come as an uh, in box accessory and so these are pretty well made in quality depending upon what phones you are uh, you have bought and um, so for me this is a qualcomm quick charge supported cable i bought it with my um moto g4 plus and this is the quick charge uh quick charger that came with that so again uh, this is the zero cost cable this is what i'm going to call it the second one is the chinese low cost cables and we have an example right here so this is a portronics generic chinese cable uh, one of the good quality ones that i could find just to give such cables an edge uh, and just if you are wondering what this uh, odd sleeve is uh, i usually refer to this cable as the lingerie cable just so you know and from that we are actually going to move over to the costliest uh, cable in this segment and this happens to be an anchor power line now uh, this video is not sponsored by anchor in any way but uh, this is one of the cables uh, that i could find that say that it's really high quality and they are charging a premium for it just so you know this is the kind of box it comes back in and these cables are actually supposed to be very good in quality and what i am uh, sensing is of course among these three cables uh, the data transfer rate won't really matter and we are not testing the data transfer rate data transfer rates use digital signals and the quality of the cable does not matter across these three cables the data transfer rate would be exactly the same so we are going to measure how much current and uh, at what rates Uh, will it be able to properly power up the raspberry pi so now for my final uh, test guinea pig i am using my raspberry pi 3 it is connected to the ethernet it is connected to the hdmi and has a usb hub with a keyboard and a mouse a full size keyboard and a mouse now this is what i will be using to measure voltage Now first of all if you guys do not have confidence in this voltmeter this is a very accurate one i have calibrated it and tested it with my uh, mastic multimeter uh, and those come pretty well calibrated so this uh, so this one is a really good calibrated one and we are going to measure how much voltage drop out is detected so now if you guys don't know um, these power supply supply at 5 volts now they are rated at 5 volts but that is open circuit and as a uh, equipment starts drawing current the voltage starts dropping down you can have one amp of current being drawn from the equipment with the voltage as low as 4.5 amps or under or unless your power supply fries off so we are going to test what uh, voltage dropout is and another reason for that is the raspberry pi detects voltage dropout and not the amount of current when it says that it's not getting enough power now i will not be showing the screen of the hdmi output because the raspberry pi's red led blinks whenever it detects that it has a low voltage so for the power supply we are going to use uh, this sony cyber uh, cycle energy a uh, power bank and this a uh, power bank sorry a uh, a charger and this is rated at 5 volts uh, 2.1 amps so it's a pretty reliable charger i've been using it for a long time never have given me issues 
so let's see how much voltage dropout we get uh, first of all is the zero co cost charger the ones that you get default with your uh, mobile devices so la let's plug that in and then switch on our power supply so as you can see the initial voltage is actually around 4.8 volts so as the operating system starts to load um, the voltage will fall with uh, the load on the hardware so as you can see it's around 4.8 occasionally going up to 4.9 now to stress out the CPU what I will do is go ahead and run a kind of a graphics benchmark using the processing IDE and I will be doing this for every test. I will show you what the benchmark is at the end of the video. Okay, so I have started the benchmark and as you can see the voltage is at 4.87. Let's take that as a benchmark voltage and we'll compare this one to the other two remaining cables. Now I would also like to point out that the LED on the Raspberry Pi did not blink. So it's not dated detecting any uh, under current or under voltage right now so again 4.88 volts is what I am taking uh, it to be so I am going to shut this down and change the cable so for our next cable I have the uh, generic Chinese lingerie cable uh, whatever you want to call it and this re represents all the Chinese cables out there so let's plug that in and uh, let's see what we get all right so right off the bat we have 4.9 volts the OS hasn't even started booting and we are already at 4.7 I did see the LED flicker a bit and it's actually fl flickering quite frequently so the Pi is actually struggling to keep up with that and uh, I will go ahead and start up my benchmark alright so I am running the benchmark and what it seems like is the voltage has stabilized at 4.79 or 4.78 which is almost a hundred milli uh, volts less than what we had with the zero dollar cable I am from India why am, am I even calling it a zero dollar cable so a zero rupees cable and uh, so if you guys know that a hundred milliamps actually make a lot of difference when it comes to uh, electronical or electrical devices like the Raspberry Pi uh, and the voltage dropout is actually being de detected by the Raspberry Pi uh, while I am running the benchmark the LED is flickering quite a bit so um, that concludes it the Portronics cable is a uh, hundred millivolts less than the zero rupees cable and let me switch again to our final cable and we'll see how that goes all right so we are at the uh, premium grade cables right here and this is the anchor power line so let's go ahead and insert this and power on our raspberry pi all right so i have powered on the raspberry pi and i am getting around 4.95 volts 93 volts at boot and we'll see how it goes from here um, let's go ahead and turn on our benchmarking application alright so I have started stress testing the Raspberry Pi and um, the voltage isn't going really below 4.95 which is really great so it's just 0.50 milliamps uh, millivolts less than uh, the the voltage mentioned on the power supply as well as the recommended voltage now this is absolutely normal there are some 
drops in a closed circuit and what this means is that of course if you are planning on running uh, something on the Raspberry Pi that is going to take up a lot of especially on the Raspberry Pi 3 that is going to take up a lot of processing power what you need to do is buy or invest a little bit in these expensive cables and what you would get is a much stable result now this is uh, necessary if you are depending upon the Raspberry Pi for any sort of sensitive work that might affect your earnings or your business depends on it or something like that so again um, yes you need to at times invest in a proper micro USB cables because of the fact that micro USB as a standard was never meant to deliver a huge amount of current and this is what happens when you push a standard too far you start getting cables that can't keep up I'm not saying that the zero rupees cable is bad that is also very usable but if you are going to really push the pi to its limit and uh, you know attach suppose or say a hard drive it would it would actually even increase the amount of current being drawn now talking about hard drives uh, modern uh, usb power supplies the 5 volt power supplies actually come with a rating of 5.1 instead of 5 so that means what you will be getting here is actually dot 5 volts so they already compensate for the 100 uh, millivolts that are lost in transmission uh, or due to anything else uh, and what you get is a 5 volt at the end of the wire now a lot of people would be asking why I chose to use this particular um, voltmeter and that is because I already own one of these charge adopters and the problem is that they are notorious for being inaccurate as well as that they uh, connect at the uh, USB um, power supply uh, point uh, in the whole circuit instead of at the end point that should be at the Raspberry Pi so what they're telling is the amount of voltage the power supply is providing that is 5 volts and by the time it reaches the Raspberry Pi it has dropped quite a lot so again uh, of course I would like to show you guys the test um, stress test kind of a thing I'm not stressing the Raspberry Pi completely but that actually helps prove my point if you're not stressing the Raspberry Pi completely and you are still getting a difference of almost a uh, hundred millivolts that's a lot and this is just a graphical kind of a demo I'm running on uh, processing and uh, this actually stresses more of the GPU rather the, than the CPU uh, of course running this on the OpenGL graphics driver so um, thank you so much for watching guys uh, like share and subscribe and I will see you in the next one